Hey, this is Joe with Grow It Build It, and today I'm going to give you an update on my leaf mulch and how my soil has improved for 2023. So if you are a somewhat regular viewer of this channel, you've probably followed along on my using of leaf mulch. Going back several years, I've updated you on how my soil has improved year over year by adding a thick layer of leaves on top of it in the fall, and how it's held up as a natural weed barrier and the general observations and improvements to the soil. I'll be discussing that here as well as several other topics today in this video. But this video will serve as an update to my leaf mulch journey and in it we are going to cover the leaves I added to my garden in 2022, the benefits I receive and the changes in the black soil depth of my garden, the garden expansion we did last year nearly doubling it, and how a layer of leaves has added black soil depth over this year, planting seeds in a leaf mulch garden. I finally figured out a method on how to plant a row of seeds and had some success which I'll share leaf mulch and slugs namely are they an issue and yeah some general observations and then we will review so without further ado let's get started all right so this past fall i covered my entire garden in a thick layer of leaf mulch same as i've done in years past in addition to my neighbor who has always supplied me with 30 to 60 bags i also got leaves from several other neighborhood and community sources which was quite nice. And I even got a few contractor bags that had Norway maple leaves and the little helicopters, you know, the seeds in them. And the Norway maple was a bit of an experiment as I had some concerns that the seeds may germinate. But I'll just say up front that they did not. I don't know why they didn't, but I was happy to not have to pull hundreds of small tree seedlings. But let's cut to the chase. How deep did my black organic soil go after year four of leaf mulch? Well, I took several samples around my garden. And this year I had a dark black crumbly soil layer that was a solid seven to nine inches deep, depending on where I took it. And after that, I hit the orange brown inorganic soil that I started with. The deepest layer that I found was between these two tomato plants and excuse the roots. I dug all the way down to nine to 10 inches of depth before I hit the orange brown soil. But I hit it nonetheless and you can see clearly how deep this soil goes. It's really crazy. Now I'd like to back up and refresh your memory as to where my soil was at when I started using leaves. In the fall of 2019 I had maybe a quarter inch of black soil on top of my garden um, and after that it was the orange brown inorganic soil. That was when I first put six inches of leaves on top of my entire garden and over the course of the following year it changed the top two inches of my garden into black crumbly organic soil. I repeated this process for the next two years and this increased the depth of the black soil roughly two inches per year give or take a bit and that continued right on into this year. Now over time that organic layer keeps getting deeper and deeper into the soil due to worms and other processes. And even though I've added all these leaves over the years, the level of my garden soil relative to my lawn is basically the same. I can't tell any difference in height at all. And just a side note, one effect I didn't expect for doing this for so long and trying to film it is that as this layer goes deeper and deeper, I need to dig much larger holes to, in order to get the camera down to get a decent picture. Now, if you guys are liking this video and these results, please click the like button as that's a very easy way to help me out and I do greatly appreciate it. So the benefits I received from using leaf mulch are just immense. I showed you how much my soil has improved since I started doing this, as it's clearly easy to work and I have much larger plants than when I didn't. But these leaves do add nutrients as they decompose. If you want to see the nitty gritty details of this, I will link to an article at my website where I summarize and cite these studies, showing you exactly how many nutrients are added. But another benefit that I find absolutely huge is that I almost never have to pull weeds in my garden. The leaves are a natural weed barrier, and that alone is reason enough to use leaf mulch for me, as it allows me to be a passive gardener, only going out to harvest and occasionally prune. I don't have to be out there micromanaging my garden. In a typical week of the growing season, I just go out and harvest once or twice and prune plants occasionally. Although I should probably prune others? more frequently. So how did my garden do? Well, overall, the garden was great this year for pretty much all my plants, bumper crops all around. The only one that seemed to not do as well as the others was my tomato plants. I mean, they did fine and I had more tomatoes than I could eat, but we didn't have a huge bumper crop like the previous year. And I surmise the main reason for this was a regional one, as we had a couple of severe droughts. We had one of the driest springs on record, and summer was dry too. 
In fact, we only recorded a single day of rain in May, and that has never happened. I mean, seriously, this is what my front lawn looked like at the end of May. It should not be yellow and crunchy. It should be lush and green. In June and July, we did get rains, but not a ton, but enough. However, in August, it dried up again. So, I mean, I was given some supplemental water, but overall, the situation was a bit trying. But there was one other interesting side effect of this drought, though, is that in some areas of my garden, the leaf mulch didn't seem to decompose as fast. And when I went to take my soil samples, you could see a layer of it just matted up. You can see this right here. It's almost like you can open it like pages of a book, but you can see how when this decomposes, it's going to just completely add good stuff to your garden. Other than tomatoes, I had a banner year on peppers, zucchinis, cucumbers, squash, garlic beets, and got my first cabbages too. My tomato yields, I mean, they were fine, but it wasn't just the crazy bumper crop of the year prior. Expansion. Okay, so where to begin? Well, for starters, we decided to expand our garden last year and fence it all in for deer. We went from a 17 by 17 to a 30 by 17. And the new section wasn't completely new ground as the first five feet of it or so, we had grown some watermelons and tomatoes for my kids as their own garden. And, you know, that was just built with cardboard and compost on top. But the next 12 to se by 17 feet was fresh ground. And I was going to apply a thick layer of leaves as usual, but before I did, I first spread compost. But the thing was, is I only put it on half of that new section. I figured I would make a soil samples later this year, and I wanted to see what kind of effect, if any, I could tell. So, these all got the same thick layer of leaf mulch, you know, 6 to 12 inches. I tried to keep it equal, but the east half got a 2 inch layer of compost before the leaves, while the west just had, uh, you know, plain soil and leaves on top. So, on the results, the west side, which only got the leaves, had a layer of black soil that was 2 to 3 inches thick, taking a few samples. On the east side, with the added compost, it seemed to be 3 to 4 inches thick. So, the side that got the compost and leaves had roughly an extra inch of black organic matter for its top depth. Not a shocking result, but I just wanted to see if I'd be able to tell a difference. So this is basically what you would expect. Planting seeds. Okay, so in each year I've talked about leaf mulch, I've always been asked on how to plant rows of seeds. I had successfully planted seeds in years past in isolated locations, mainly squashes and lettuce, but whenever I tried planting rows, I always failed as I would make a small trench with leaves, plant seeds, and then the wind would blow leaves back in and They'd either smother the seedlings or I'd hurt them trying to get the leaves back out. Well, this year I was able to overcome that with a fairly cheap solution. I initially did this on a small six foot strip in the spring, but it worked. So I'm going to share those results. What I did was I removed the leaves and made like a little trench as before. And so what did I do? I firmly pressed the seeds into the soil and then I put a layer of compost on top and just kept it watered. I had a pretty good germination rate. Uh, but I did something incredibly simple and low cost. I laid down a cedar picket on each side of this trench. These are cedar picket fence boards you can get for Lowe's for like four bucks. Just be careful because they also have pressure treated ones and you don't want to use those. But this was kind of a dumb moment as it was very simple, very cheap, and very rot resistant. In fact, the cedar pickets also served as markers so I could know if it was safe to walk and no significant amount of leaves ever did fall in between them. And if they did, I could easily see them and remove them. And in the end, I had a pretty nice harvest of beets. And I replanted seeds later in the summer, in July no less, for a fall crop. And that's just starting to mature now. Okay, time to talk about slugs. In past years, I've also been asked about slugs, if they were ever a problem for me. And I always said no, because I just never saw any of them on my produce. You know, this was mainly tomatoes, peppers, squashes, and cucumbers. But this year, with my newfound expansion, I decided to grow some cabbages. And I got slugs. They were a problem. Now, I need to stress that I did absolutely no prevention or remedies on slugs. So the leaf mulch layer is definitely a nice habitat for slugs, and next year I may get creative to try to suppress them. But this year, again, I didn't do anything at all, and I still was able to harvest a decent amount. So knowing that I have a slug problem with leaf mulch, you know, what are my plans for next year? So are the slugs going to deter me from using leaf mulch? Well, in short, no, they won't. The benefits to my soil and weed suppression from using leaves are so great that they far outweigh a reduced harvest for some cabbages. Uh, right now I'm growing a few heads in a cold frame that will hopefully mature in November or December time frame, but we'll see how that works out. But so far, so good. You know, next year I will probably try some tricks to stop the slugs, but you know, this year, if nothing else, it served as an example of what happens when you do nothing. Okay, time to review. 
So after four years of using leaf mulch, my garden soil is black and crumbly to a depth of seven to nine inches. And the newly expanded section of my garden has a black soil layer of basically three to four inches deep. So you essentially will add two inches of depth of black crumbly soil to your garden per year by using at least a six inch layer of leaf mulch based on my experience. Overall, my garden did great, but the tomatoes seemed to suffer from a drought that I, you know, I, in that I didn't have a bumper crop. I still had plenty of tomatoes, you know, more than we could eat, but I just didn't, you know, have them coming out my ears. I found that you can plant seeds very nicely by using cedar pickets to line a trench after removing leaves, pressing seeds into soil, covering with compost. And those cedar pickets, they stop leaves from gathering, basically, or allow them to slide through easily so that you can remove them safely, as well as showing you where to walk. And the nice moisture retention you get from the leaf mulch is also great for slugs, which we would, could all probably have guessed, but even with no countermeasures, I was still able to harvest plenty of cabbage. So that's all I've got for you today. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button as I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. If you want to see the nitty gritty details of those studies that show you how much nutrients are added from leaves, go to the links below at my website where I have them summarized and cited. But yeah, happy gardening and I hope you guys all can gather some leaves. Goodbye.